evening everybody and a very warm welcome to Sheffield on Loddon and my new layout which will end up being Ringwood South. Now today I'd like to talk about the Hornby Elite. Um, many of you will know that um, um, Alan kindly um, gave me a Hornby Elite. Um, and I've had it now for probably about, I suppose, a week, maybe, um, maybe more. Um, but I just wanted to talk about it because um, basically um, I just wanted to give you some feedback and some thoughts on it. Um, I've had um, one or two issues um, that I've come across. And so I wanted to sort of touch base with you to let you guys know that if you do own one of these, which is a Hornby Elite, um, some of the things to um, look out for. Um, the first thing, um, and the overall theme of it, this, this video is going to be about the firmware, and I'm going to show you that on my computer. Um, I bought a Loco recently, um, and I tried to get a TTS um, sound chip fitted to it. Um, and basically, um, <coughs> excuse me, that was fair enough. Now you'll actually see that video should it get, eventually get published. It's been seriously delayed because of all the issues that I've had. Um, I bought a, um, a Hornby Loco which had a TTS sound that could be fitted to it. So I bought a sound chip for it, and basically I fitted the sound chip to the said locomotive. Now, um, the first locomotive, uh, sorry, the first sound decoder, um, it was very easy to install as it so happens, um, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to publish it anyway. Um, so you guys who may have the same loco can, can do it. So I'm hoping to finish that if I can get the sound chip to work. And that's kind of the crux of what's happened with the Elite. Um, so I put the sound chip in it and when I put it on the programming track, it just buzzed and came up as an error on the um, on the uh, on the elite. So um, I actually thought that this, the the chip may very well be faulty. Um, I had a few suggestions about rewriting and resetting the sound decoder and even in the actual leaflet that comes with the sound decoder it says if you've got problems with it you can reset it by changing the CV value which going by the um, Elite handbook was perfectly fine and doable which is what I did um, unfortunately that didn't help the, um, the sound chip at all um, I returned the sound chip and got another sound chip and um, but in between that I realised that my um, Hornby Elite, <coughs> excuse me, the firmware was showing 1.42 version. Now there has since been another one updated, and that is up to version 1.44. So it got me thinking um, whether or not this might have something to do with why the sound decoder isn't working correctly. Um, I was wondering whether or not because the sound decoder was relatively new release um, whether or not it needed a newer firmware. And basically I decided to go onto Hornby's website to update the firmware onto my Elite and um, initially um, that was an extremely big mistake and um, I will show you why very very shortly. So stick with me and I will take you to my computer screen and explain further. So here we are at my computer screen and um, I can now explain to you um, what happened. Now the reason for putting up this video is purely because um, I don't want anybody to panic if you try doing this and you get it wrong. Um, this is the whole crux of the video. It's almost so you can, if you want to have a go at 
of doing it, you can do it with some sort of confidence, knowing that it should still work if you get it wrong. Um, because what's happened is I updated the firmware on my on my Elite. Now, as you can see here, it says name here, it says name Mallard. But here, um, when you boot it up, it will turn around and say what version you've got. And when I initially did it, um, it said version 1.42. <coughs> and there is another version, which is 1.44. And this is Hornby's website, and you can download it here. Now, I've already done this. And you end up with a file. If I try and drag this over here a bit, so it's a bit easier to see. It's um, it basically says Elite version 1.44 update two. So you end up with a file on your desktop like that. And when you open it up, um, you end up with this. Um, and what happened is um. I was doing the update with Windows 10 and it's important that you know what the operating system you're running um, because there's a way of updating it with Windows 7 and the one that I did was Windows 10 and then this one's Windows XP and this is the actual application itself which you have to run and also um, you have to run the device manager which is like a quick shortcut which is listed here now you have to follow the and it does say you need to follow it to the letter and I misread it to be honest with you um, and what happened when I tried to do it it came up with an upload fail and because of that um, my my Hornby Elite basically had a blank screen. So the only thing that was working was the little green light. But all the rest of it was blank. So you couldn't use it, you couldn't reset it, you couldn't do absolutely nothing with it. Essentially it was dead. Which was very worrying. <coughs> Since I've only just had it for literally about a week. Um, but, again, um, it says where you can download it here. And you need to follow it step by step. And um, it's it really is crucial that you follow the steps step by step. Um, but one of the things, the standout thing is, as long as you follow this all step by step, the, there's still an issue with it in the sense that if I open up the, um, the update application, um, it comes up, this is, this is the application itself. And it says version 1.4. This is what it says. So what you what you basically need to do is you need to um, it basically has got the preparation here. It says before you connect the power to your Elite for the first time um, to update it, just hold the stop button, plug it in, and count for 15 seconds. Once you get to 15 seconds, release the stop button and then basically um, let it um, sit for another 15 seconds, so basically 13 seconds, 30 seconds in total. Once you've done that, you need to, need to go to your device manager, which is, there's a shortcut within the folder, so if you go to that, you just go to open, and then here it will tell you where the ports are. But what I found is that information isn't necessarily correct because the port system never actually um, came up on this on this on this tab at first. It was only when I connected it to the computer via the USB um, that it actually recognised it, and then the pop-up screen came up to say that the port was opened and which which the COM device was, which is what it says basically down here. If you read along here, and in this case, it's saying COM two. So when you go to the, to the application here and go to next, it will turn around and ask you for which port. Now obviously it's blank because my Elite isn't actually connected. Um, but if it says COM2, then it will come up as COM2. And if it says a different COM, then it will come up as well. But like I said, it will come up on your device manager, which one it is. Now here's the tricky bit. Um, 
when I first installed it, I installed it as PC Type 1. And there's PC Type 2 and PC Type 3. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, I don't understand that. And quite frankly, I was exactly the same. I didn't understand it at all. And I done it with PC Type 1. Now, I did that. I did download. The green bar came up, came up, came up, saying that it was writing to the Elite. And when it got to the end, it went, update failed. And then that's what caused the blank screen. Because then I couldn't get it, couldn't get the screen back because it was blanked off from when I initially started the preparation process. So now at this point I'm thinking, oh, I've, I've messed this up and I can't, I've just broken it and all the rest of it. So I read the instructions yet again, and it does say on here that you, as long as you follow the instructions, it does say at the bottom that you should. Um, Probably, depending on how old your computer is, but a good safe bet is to try using Type 2. So I've selected Type 2, went through the whole process again of um, doing the 15 second, plug it in, then release it for another 15 seconds, did the device manager. So basically restarted the whole process again. And then I, instead of having it on PC Type 1, I scrolled down to PC Type 2. And then I'd click the download button. And the Elite recognised it, thankfully. And um, and that was, that, that was much to my relief, to be honest with you. So now, if I plug this in... Um, it should come out. I don't know if it will come up. Yeah, it's coming up. It should say version 1.44. There you go, DCC 1.44. So now that's been updated to the latest firmware. So now it's, it's now it's now running. So now thankfully I've tested out my Merchant Navy on it and it's working perfectly fine now. So now I've got a now working fully up to date Hornby DCC controller. Now it is a bit of a faff to be honest with you. Um, I, I can't see why Hornby can't make it easier. But unfortunately this is the way it works. Um, I I mean, PC one I think Type one is if you've got an an old computer. One's I think two is like if you've got a medium computer, and three if you've got like a brand new computer or something. Um, but it does explain it in here, um, and it does show you like it says here. Like you get this bar and it goes across. So it is important um, that you do follow these steps by the letter and. You will get there. If, it, if at first it fails, um, I guess the moral of this story and the video is basically if it fails at first, um, don't panic that you've got a blank screen and that you've messed up your Elite and that you can't do nothing with it. Um, basically, just go through the whole process again. But when you get to type 1, make sure you, you've got that you just try a different one and see how you get on with that. Like I said, it, it does say at first to try number two, but it could be number one. So even in Hornby's writing, it does say, um, uh, let me read you. Here you go. Um, the PC type number roughly corresponds to the speed of the processor and the version of the Windows you are running. In most cases, the most recent processors will be associated with Windows 10. However, this is never a complete guarantee. As a starting point, we recommend that you select type two as a starting point. Um, if you're using Type 2 it takes longer to complete the update process or possibly fails. Um, try Type 1 which may be better suited to an older PC and use Type 3 for a faster more recent. So basically even Hornby aren't 100% certain so it is a bit of a guessing game. Um, but like I said if at first you don't succeed um, do try again. Just remember the two important things um, to remember is to make sure you've got the COM port right, which if you follow the steps correctly, um, when you plug in the USB port to the back of the Elite, it will automatically come up and recognise the fact that a port's been opened and that will tell you which one it is, whether it's COM port 1, 2, 3, 4 or whichever. And then you put that number into the port here and then you know it's reading... Um, that the PC is communicating with the Elite 
and then it's a case of um, just playing about with this. And like I said, if at first you don't succeed, just start off, start from scratch again, um, but just change this number, and hopefully that will just reset it. And then I'm hoping that for any future releases that Hornby bring out in terms of firmware updates, um, I'm hoping that basically um, it will come up. I'll be able to. I know it will be a lot quicker because I used PC Type Two before. So hopefully, if I do it for PC Type Two on the next update, it should automatically work. Um, now I've done this once before. I'm hoping that that the future times I come to update it, um, it'll be a lot quicker and a lot easier and a lot, and a lot less painful. I'm just thankful that the Elite is now fully working and up to date, but I'm not exactly sure what's going on with the sound decoder because that still doesn't work and it's coming up as an error code, so I'm not sure if it's the decoder or the PCB on the actual loco itself, in which case the loco will have to go back. But that's a different video. So I hope this helps. Um, I know it, it might be a bit confusing, um, but... I, I, I had to put this video up because I really couldn't see any other video um, up on YouTube to sort of explain what happens if this happens to you. Um, I've contacted Hornby and quite frankly they, they're, they're pretty poor. They sent me an initial email to say that they've received my ticket but it can take up to 28 days for them to contact me about it and to be honest with you it's not really good enough and if you're somebody who has a layout already and depends on your DCC controller um, in your Elite and you haven't got another one, you don't particularly want to wait around for 28 days for the, or possibly up to 28 days for them to get back to you to resolve the issue. So like I said, if any of you have this issue, um, I know it's a bit tricky, but hopefully this video will help. So bye from Sherford or Lodden and I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>